Hi, everybody. Welcome to the second ever episode of WAMC's A Face for Radio video series. It's our new art series that we're doing over here on Instagram Live because a lot of our programming is preempted by very important arts, I'm sorry, news coverage, pandemic coverage, um, COVID-19 updates, updates from the governor, different, different press conferences, different news stories, very serious stuff. But we were missing our friends in the arts, so I asked WAMC, my leadership at WAMC, if I could start this series. And I did last week, I featured Aaron McKeown. And today we're going to talk about a, an event happening online tomorrow that is commissioned by New York Live Arts and MPAC at RPI in Troy. We're going to be speaking with a curator, with Ashley Farrow murray from MPAC, and also then with scholar, poet, and performance artist, Jamilo Lavale Kasako. It's, um, I've been reading all about this project, which has been a long-term commission that had to get completely remaneuvered to fit our current news situation. So in a moment, I'm gonna welcome Ashley, and then I will speak with Jamilo Lavale Kasako. But first, before we cut to them, I wanted to make sure I gave you a heads up on what is coming up. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm gonna speak with Broadway actor, singer, concert performer, friend of the station, recording artist, beautiful human, Jason Danielly. That's tomorrow at one o'clock on, tomorrow's Wednesday. On Thursday at one o'clock, I'm gonna speak with the co-founder, executive director, and programmer of the Woodstock Film Festival, Myra Blaustein. And on Friday at one, I'm going to speak with Sam Anderson, who's a writer for the New York Times Magazine, and he wrote my favorite book of the last number of years, Boomtown, and he recently published in the New York Times Magazine a big celebration of Weird Al Yankovic. It's a, uh, I love Sam's writing, I love Weird Al, and so on Friday we're going to talk to Sam about what it was like to hang out with Weird Al for a while and then write about him and what he's meant to him and what he means kind of in culture. So without further ado, let me invite MPAC to join me. I'm letting you in, go live. And we will wait, Ashley should pop up in a second here. Ashley Farrell Murray is a curator of theater and dance at MPAC. Hi, Ashley. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's loaded to ask people, how are you? But how are you? <laughs> are you doing okay? I'm doing well, I'm doing well, yeah. I'm, um, I'm home and, and safe and healthy, and so cannot ask for anything more than that. And I'm really loving the wall background <laughs> that you have going on. Thank I you. watched your Instagram, I watched you all paint that yourselves, so I know it was a, uh, I know it was a fantastical DIY yeah. job, and it yeah. looks great. <laughs> we were, I was talking about doing this from a different room, and, and my husband, Paul, was like, well, I mean, we made that awesome. Like, why don't you? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, that's a very good idea. It is really cool. I'm a so fan. So we'll, we'll show it off. Great. All right. So this, this chameleon, this project, mm -hmm. can you tell me, start by telling me a little bit about what it was supposed to be, how you began curating it and working on it with the people you've been working on it with, and then, and then tell us what it has to be now, how it's had to transition yeah. since COVID. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I started talking with Jamil about this project over three years ago now, um, and, and we've really been working actively together on it since then. And the project has been huge. It's been a multifaceted work, um, a, a co-commission by a lot of institutions, the original live piece, New York Live Arts, you mentioned, um, the Wexner Center for the Arts at, at The Ohio State University, um, as well as some international partners, um, many, many residencies that the company went through. Um, five of those actually happened at MPAC over the last three years. And the, the work was ori originally envisioned to be a live performance, but it always was to incorporate multimedia um, aspects. Mm -hmm. And so Jamil was really thinking about, um, about kind of the, the experience and performance of um, Black queer life in the United States. Um, he was thinking about the concept of a, a biomythography and and how that might relate to a queer archive that he was building. Um, so images and videos and songs and sounds um, from popular cultural media, news media. Um, and he was working with a pretty large team of collaborators to over the years build this archive. Um, part of it is out in uh, the American Chameleon podcast, um, which you can find on Spotify or on Jamil's website. Um, 
And there he talks with a lot of guests uh, about some of the themes that are coming up in his work. And the final live show was meant to be a pretty, um, you know, traditional in the sense of it happening within a theatrical context. Right. Audience People in members, seats staring in yep, one direction. Audience gotcha. members coming for a certain amount of time to see a show. Um, and, and now we found out about a month ago that that was not able to happen. So the original premiere date was set for April 2nd. We decided we needed a little more time than that to reimagine a whole new piece. Sure. Um, and so Jamil was really interested in thinking about Earth Day as a sort of day of, of remembrance, of reflection, of respect um, for the planet and for each other. And so we decided that this Wednesday, tomorrow, April 22nd, was as good of a day as any. Yeah, it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day tomorrow, That's which right. is like, for, so for 50 years, one one day a year, everybody cares about the Earth. No. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we that's tried, not the case. Well, you know, that's actually a really great <laughs> segue, Sarah, because mm -hmm. our hope for tomorrow's events actually is to start a conversation that will continue and that will kind of proliferate beyond just a one day engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're using a platform called Discord. I want to be super clear that folks can just hop on over to the MPAC website, to the New York Live Arts website, and we'll have a live feed there, just like a YouTube live stream embedded into our websites. It'll be really super easy to click that and be able to just see a, a stream of the day's events. Mm -hmm. um, but for those interested in a longer term engagement, they can actually download the app called Discord um, and kind of join the conversation in that more interactive way. And that space will continue on past tomorrow for, for Jamil's collaborators to, to continue working in these new modes um, for however long it, it serves them. So Discord, I've not heard of until I was reading up on this. It's uh, something that gamers use more than more than not gamers. <laughs> yeah, that's my you understanding. So the, <laughs> you know, to be totally honest, it came about because as an MPAC staff, we were missing one another on a daily basis. And our engineers were kind of trying to figure out how to be in better communication with one another and sort of keep each other company while they were working remotely. And mm -hmm. some of them use Discord as gamers. Okay. And they, they realized, hey, why don't we make an MPAC channel? So they made an MPEG channel and created a, a voice spot called the water cooler. And we were all able to just kind of duck in there and, and work together. You could kind of hear the sounds of people's environments if they had their microphones on. If someone had a random thought, they could mention it. But it was really kind of just like sharing the space with each other. And when we started to have online uh, video chats with Jamil to kind of think about the ways he wanted to reimagine his work, mm -hmm. we were all noticing a real video conferencing fatigue. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's, it's really <laughs> different to be kind of on in this video sense. And, and Jamil was feeling a lot of, you know, how can one sort of have creative space when you're just sitting tethered to your screen in this way and having to right. perform within this little box? So our engineers kind of recommended that we try Discord, and it was liberating to hear the voice, to be able to move around the space um, more free, freely, and that's sort of where that idea came from. So it is oftentimes used by gamers, but anybody can use it for, for any means, and you can share images, video, and as I said, the primary thing that we use it for also is, is to voice chat. Great. That's fantastic. So I'm speaking, I'm Sarah LaDuke, in case anybody didn't know, I'm speaking with Ashley Farrell Murray, who is a curator of theater and dance at MPAC. If you go to mpac.rpi.edu, it's very clear what, what Chameleon the Living installments, <laughs> like how to get information about it. It's right on the homepage and there's an FAQ page and just all kinds of information. There's a, a statement from Jamil. It's, it's been, it looks fantastic. It's very well handled, of course, like you guys Thank always you. do over there. Thank you. Um, really quick too, I'll just yeah. mention that um, Jamil also put out a zine, which is a hyperlinked um, interactive syllabus. And we actually have classes from universities across the country, from UC Berkeley's Berkeley Center for New Media to University of Pennsylvania, Cornell, Brown, Princeton, UCLA, UW Bothell, Malmo University. Um, a lot of different online courses will join in. So if there are any faculty listening, that's another resource that's on our website is this, this syllabus that Jamil put together. Um, and that can help your students through some of this material as well. Fantastic. It's wonderful to see you and to get a Likewise, kind of primer Sarah. from you on this. And now I get to talk to Jamil. Yeah, absolutely. I'm <laughs> glad you're well. Take care. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Bye -bye. So I'm going to drop by. I'm going to drop you. Remove impact.
just from the call, not from our hearts. And then let me search here to find Chameleon Coalition and ask them to join. Oh, I think maybe you have to request. Jamil, if you're there, can you request to join this call, please? Jamila Lalaway Kasako is a scholar, poet, and performance artist working on this commission that was called Chameleon, and now it's Chameleon the Living Installments. It's a whole new thing that's going to be at, well, online. All right, here we go. Add. I'm going to take this off for a second and clear my throat. <clears> throat> hello. 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 Hi. Hello. I'm Sarah. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Sarah. <laughs> So tell us what you, before we talk about this work and what you've been working on, tell us what you're comfortable sharing with us about where and how you're living during the pandemic. Oh. <laughs> Whatever you want well, to share. How, how, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Tons, um, actually. Tons of time, okay. <laughs> um, I'm well, I'm, I'm uh, based in Pennsylvania at the moment. Um, I... Yeah, it was, you know, I have my, my, my live workspace, I have a live workspace in Brooklyn as well. And I kind of ran out of there when, when things really started to, yeah, not look so good. Um, so, yeah, so now I'm, I guess, uh, you're retreating, if you will. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, retreating in, in Philly at the moment. All right. So yeah. what should be the first thing that, I mean, Ashley gave us, a, you know, some information, but from your from your heart and soul from your mind what is the mm -hmm. first thing we should know about about chameleon and then tell us about what the the living installments and what rearranging it has been like mm -hmm. i think it's important to know that you know so much of of chameleon is a proposal for for how we essentially want to be in the world together you know um how do we uh, adapt to new realities, uh, ever shifting environments, complexity, um, just as a as a kind of a way of reconsidering. I think what our social agreements uh, need to be in this moment, and sort of what kind of vessel we want to be and and need to be in order to really survive. Um, so that's you know an answer that's at the core of it. I think. Um, yeah. yeah. How do you, how do you dig down on that and decide who you'll collaborate with, what the commission from the performing arts groups means and how you develop well, it over time? When do exactly. you know that it's ready to mm -hmm. do something with? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, I must say, you know, um, yeah, just to kind of preach the praises of impact being so incredibly adaptive and transformative and supportive you know as i was really delving into this work uh and doing what was needed to kind of continue to transform as as i was transforming as my thinking was transforming and that's nothing new uh in this moment you know the that that amazing place has helped to you know reimagine uh this this proposal of chameleon and um, if you if you follow the hashtag uh, chameleon biomyth, mm -hmm. um, you will be able to sort of chart the, the the various progressions of the work as well over the past couple of years um, from various residencies that we you know were able to do all over the world. So in that way, you know, it was embedded in in the thinking to always allow this thing to be transformative and to be responsive to what was happening in the world that felt really important uh and to the specific environment that we that we found ourselves in as a as a team um and you know and some collaborators <laughs> were 100 percent and, and really excited about that others uh maybe not so much <laughs> um well, and that's <laughs> right right yeah, you know, yeah either you're on the boat or you're not um, and so, but yeah, it, it, you know, it's it's really been a continuous process in and 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 coming to terms with what you know doneness mean or what what something is to be finished. When I think the moment and the the sort of questions of the moment is not really around finishing, but how we how we continue, how we continue to be together, continue to work together, to collaborate, to do the work, you know, that's needed. Um, you know, to, to really move forward uh, in the way that I think is required of our humanity at the moment. I'm Sarah LaDuke speaking with 
scholar, performance artist, and poet, Jamila Lawale Kasako. The hashtag you mentioned, chameleon biomyth, is that primarily on Instagram or is it on multiple social media platforms? It's primarily on Instagram, uh, but you know, just yeah, put it in. <laughs> right, I'm search, it, search now it, find it. <laughs> search it, see what comes up. Um, there's a lot of hashtags. There's also uh, a work hashtag Negrophobia that I made, um, you know, a few years before uh, before this piece. And so there's a number of hashtags out there that anyone can sort of follow to um, learn a little bit more about, you know, my work and, and practice. So tomorrow is Earth Day. And that yes. is when like a lot of stuff will be happening. It's a day long thing you all put together. Can you tell me more about the specifics of some of the little events? And I know they're all listed at mpac.rpi.edu, but tell me about yes. it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm ecstatic about this program in a way that my work, I feel like this work is really asking me to pull from my history as a curator, pull from my history as an artist, as a poet, uh, as a filmmaker, it really is allowing me to showcase so many different facets of myself, um, my thinking, uh, the way I teach and how I sort of move through the world. It's really a convergence of, of so many different realities for me that for a very long time felt like they had to be compartmentalized. And now this work is, is offering me an opportunity to allow all of these 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 selves, if you will, to to converge, and it feels incredibly exciting. I'm I'm bringing into the conversation, into the evening, into the day of events, uh, colleagues, friends of mine that I've had for years. Uh, Ebony Noel Golden is the uh, CEO of Betty's Daughter Art Collective, uh, based in um, Harlem, and doing really important, great work as a cultural strategist, as a thinker. Um, I'm in conversation with uh, Ashan Crawley, uh, a brilliant scholar and uh, theorist, um, artist, uh, and thinker as well, um, published, uh, just recently published The Lonely Letters, um, and also has this amazing book called uh, Pentecostal Breath, Black Pentecostal Breath. Um, I have Nigel Whitson, uh, my my dear family, love, heart, um, educator. A lot of smart people. <laughs> There's a lot of really brilliant, brilliant people. Um, I'm in conversation with Nigel Whitson, um, has the Denwa Collective, uh, and is, yeah, just really thinking deeply around themes of unarrival and, 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 and how we sort of move and consider you know, what it means to, to be a transient self, a transient gender in the world. Um, also very multifaceted artist. Um, and then last but not least is Autumn Knight, a brilliant visual performance artist. Um, and, and yeah, I was recently in the Whitney Biennial. Mm -hmm. um, and all of these folks are just like, really just loves <laughs> that I've had for so long. So it's an opportunity to be together, to share space, to talk about some of these really hard questions, uh, and to do this in a way that is educational, that is pushing um, a theme of intellectuality uh, in a time where it seems like we're really running from the intellectual self, you know, this sort of anti-intellectual reality that's really yeah running rampant in the american project mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll calm down <laughs> no you don't have to calm down <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're not here to calm down that's yeah, not what's okay. happening <laughs> okay. say what you want <laughs> yes yes so and thank you yeah of course no of course um mm -hmm. so for tomorrow how does how do the conversations how does the the um participation of these people you've just mentioned how would how does it manifest you're speaking yeah. with them live for people or of how course it yeah it's a live event uh the living installments uh so i'm i'm thinking about liveness i'm thinking about realness um you know just being honest being truthful uh and being able to sort of do that in the public domain you know especially as people of color especially as black people um, having the ability to be unapologetically black and and to allow that beauty and that spirituality uh, to to resonate and, and be present um, and to really lead in a way that I think we rarely get an opportunity to do so so yeah so that 
you know, is a, is a part of it. Um, I'm going to premiere uh, two films. Uh, one is a, is a conversation uh, with uh, the, the epic, legendary uh, Bill T. Jones. Oh, yeah. Um, he's marvelous. Yes, he's, marvelous. He's as fantastic a speaker as he is a choreographer and dancer. Indeed, indeed. And um, so it was, you know, it was brilliant to be in conversation with Bill. And so... We're going to share uh, some of that, which also has some uh, little sneak peeks and um, just goodies that kind of show some of the process uh, mm -hmm. behind the making of the work. Oh, great. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to show that. And then I'm going to show my choreo poem, Stank, uh, which is risen from Chameleon, a, bio, uh, Chameleon, a visual album, um, which was another part of this, this deep thinking that I was doing making simultaneously uh, a syllabus, a film, a podcast, an album, kind of allowing mm -hmm. all of these various sort of realities, again, to sort of be, in a, be all in a cosmology around this proposal of the chameleon. So all of that stuff is, is available and will be available, um, you know, moving into the future. But, but uh, Stank, which is uh, a choreo poem, uh, lifting that language from Ntozake Shange, um, but thinking a lot about, uh, yeah, the convergence of, of, po of poetics and the body and image, music, uh, and allowing all of these things to, to be together on the moving image, um, in the moving image. Um, and so I made this work, uh, Chameleon, a visual album with a filmmaker and performer, choreographer Ima Idoze based in uh, Helsinki, Finland. Um, and so that has been an amazing international partnership and, and collaboration. So I'm super excited to share that with a lot of folks. Um, and then we have a, a really lovely healing session uh, with uh, Michelle Boulet, who is a brilliant performer, choreographer, uh, healer, um, body talk, mind practitioner. Um, and just, yeah, really just, I, I took her class yesterday, um, which, you know, I, I teach at Princeton. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I have the luxury of inviting brilliant, you know, artists and people into the room. And so Michelle was one of those people. And, um, and Michelle led a beautiful session with the students, with me, just about uh, how we listen to our innate knowledge, how we can really focus inward and, 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 and call upon the wisdom that's already present, that's already singing inside of us. And I so needed to hear that. I just needed to hear that so deeply. Um, and so, yeah, so that's Michelle Boulet. I uh, will lead a, 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 a session with, with us. And then we will move into a conversation on uh, chameleonic, uh, adaptation and and we'll basically finish with with some live music um, by my um, uh, collaborator and composer uh, Everett Assis Saunders so again it's a it's a delicious program if I may say so myself You're I right. think it's a, a beautiful <laughs> way to spend an afternoon um, and, and yeah I think it's going to be really lovely and uh, and you can also you know tune in do your cleaning whatever talk, call a friend tune back in you know it's 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 flexible it allows for a kind of flexibility so scholar poet performance artist and professor jamil alawe kasako has his chameleon the living installments tomorrow earth day and you can learn more by visiting impact.rpi.edu before i let you go i want to ask are you on a roof I just might be on the roof. This roof is saving my life. <laughs> it's reflect that like there's a skyline reflected in your sunglasses. It's oh, absolutely yeah. like it's very exciting. <laughs> really, really beautifully handled. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I am. I, I am on a roof of, of my building. And, and literally, this is where all the fantasy take place. All the <laughs> fantasy play and parties and you know all in my head of course right of a course. lot of creativity that's that's happening here and yeah <laughs> are you um are you ready for tomorrow do you have a lot of stuff you have to do today oh you know what i say stay ready so you don't have to get ready oh so i'm that's putting my... that on a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible
incredible. I feel we like I'm always getting ready. ready. Always getting so we ready. We don't getting have ready. to get ready. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I, my, one of a, a dear educator friend of mine, uh, Eva Karsag, uh, amazing just thinker teacher, formerly of the Trisha Brown Dance Company, um, but was a teacher of mine in college. And she taught me about constant readiness, you know, and how to be prepared with constant readiness in the body. And that was one of the first, uh, I think one of the most intelligent things I, I learned and, and, and really was able to grasp uh, as a thinker, as a mover uh, who thinks mm -hmm. and, and tries to, you know, figure out a way to do all of that at the same time and consistently. Um, but yeah, you know, this idea of being constantly ready um, and, and always just prepared. And so, yeah, I think we're in a beautiful shape um, you know, there's, you know, Mayfield Brooks, now Harris, uh, some of my collaborators, performers in the work. Um, yeah, all of the work that, we, that we've been doing has been around improvisation, has been around uh, liveness, has been around really engaging, honestly. And so you, you're always ready. You know, when the heart is ready, you know, we're ready. So I think I'm, I think I'm ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> so in that, in that state of, of readiness mm. do you have to be ready for the good and the bad oh yes of course i mean that's integral it's integral i think you know having having balance and just knowing how to carry both the the pleasure and the grief is is another part of that kind of chameleonic proposal that we're that we're in right now that we we have to do a kind of emotional emotional trapeze act or something you know balancing act where we're we're, we're we're in constant negotiation and renegotiation of our of our emotional selves and it's asking of us to to really think to really think about that internally i think and and and, and in a way that can be very frightening mm -hmm. uh, because we've been so accustomed to being able to sort of move in the opposite direction when looking inward has been you know scary uh, and so now that that's not an option as much, you know, we really have to do that hard work that um, that we've been putting on for a very long time, I think. So. Too long, too long. Mm -hmm. um, are you, when we wrap up here, are you going live on, on your account or not I, today? I, oh yes, I have to go live. I'll go live at three. Um, at three, okay. I will, I'll be doing a sort of Discord onboarding you know, proposal, I suppose. Uh, and anyone who wants to join and sort of needs a little bit of help coaching, join me now uh, or forever hold your peace. Well, not forever, <laughs> but right. you know, we're, we're planning to, to cut off the, the login um, at 9 a.m. Okay. Uh, before the event. So just to reduce the amount of stress and people trying to sort of get in at the last minute, it can just be really distracting. Definitely. Um, and so and just like, <laughs> like a live performance in that regard, you know, sure, sure, sure. it can be really you People know, coming in late. Yeah. Exactly. So we're trying to uh, not, you know, really concern so much with, with that. So please register early or just enjoy uh, a passive viewing of the live stream, which will be equally beautiful and engaging. Impact.rpi.edu or newyorklivearart.org. Jamila Lawale Kasako, thank you very much for joining me on a Face for Radio video series. And yes. have a, you know, have a wonderful, wonderful performance tomorrow. And Thank you so much. It was so, so fantastic to, to speak with you. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. You too. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>
good Lord, that was wonderful. Um, again, this week, we will be speaking with Jason Danielly, Mayra Blaustein from the Woodstock Film Festival, and New York Times Magazine staff writer Sam Anderson about his profile of Weird Al. Tomorrow at 1, Thursday at 1, Friday at 1. Thank you all very, very much. You can, of course, find any WAMC programming you're looking for other than this online at WAMC.org. Thanks to those of you who tuned in, and I will see you tomorrow. Stay safe in there.